dentist because I missed my appointment. And I will then do the second part of the review for the um, video things. Maybe it's not a great idea. Uh, so, 13 reasons why Netflix is a lot of brutality, a lot of, it says warning, graphic violence, sexual harassment, explicit sexuality, uh, violence, etc. And that's true. So, so basically it's divided into the jocks, the ones that are doing football, American football is a big industry. I, I, did, I didn't realize how sexist it really is because you have the cheerleaders, the girls are cheerleaders, they're jumping in small little skirts and the boys are football players. I think that's horrible. I can't even imagine going into a system like that ever, ever. Definitely not as a teenager. And so there's the jocks and they have this, uh, they harass girls. And they drink a lot at parties, and I think it's important to to inform teenagers not to drink. Um, as much as we want to say, well, women can do whatever they want to not get into trouble. I think it's important to tell girls not to drink, not to take drugs, not to drink when they're with boys, because then things can happen to them. Um, so season one was uh, discussing the aftermath of the suicide. The suicide. You see um, the background, how difficult it is for the people around her, the family, the parents. I thought, in a way, it was downplayed um, because I think maybe initially you're in shock, you don't react, but I thought it was a little bit too quiet or too underplayed. I think if a child commits suicide, you, you would be devastated, but of course the people's temperament is different, so I can't even imagine going through something like that. And um, it's really scary how easy easily it can happen again. So season one is the suicide, season two is also interesting how they progress and it's, a whole, um, it's also uh, first there's hope that there's um, uh, Bryce, the one who raped her and another girl, uh, Jazz, will be, you know, will face charges. And I kind of skipped that, I think I fell asleep because I was doing really a marathon of binging. I was at the stage where I didn't go out of the house even, but my dog suffered a lot. But um, I missed something, but the trial also was very, very long. We took a lot of evidence, and um, then there's um, a few deaths. We learn again and again how alcohol is very dangerous. Also for girls, that you can get uh, attacked when you're under the influence of alcohol or when you're with boys that are under the influence of alcohol and then there's the um, and drugs of course and I wonder how prevalent it is the uh, heroin in all these drugs in high schools it's kind of scary I know that I went to a very conservative high school because of that reason because my parents didn't want me to go to a high school where there's drugs I'm more liberal once um, so I didn't have to deal with that, except when I lived in New York for a bit. I was aware of drugs being there, and yeah, but I was too young then for it to affect me. Uh, again, to this TV series. So, second season is Trials. Um, I don't think it's very realistic, because I, I can't imagine the interrogations are like that. But they're trying to get down to the to whether, you know, to place this Bryce, um, he's facing charges for this way. And of course the victim is dead, so it's very difficult. And then the other victim is alive and doesn't want to talk. 
And then there's this group of girls that get together and they form a band called HO, Hands Off. I love the, I love the slogan. And there's also then um, sexual harassment of a boy. Very, very, very brutal. And, uh, I have to say, if you're sensitive, it, it is indeed, there's warnings. It's very difficult, but I think it's a sort of shock that's uh, good for young people. Because they should know to be careful of home, especially in certain countries like the race. There's no Oh, oh no. I think I lost my number. I'm not sure. I don't know if I know. I hope they didn't miss it. Oh well. Wow. I'll ask her. I might have missed it because I have headphones on. So, anyway, there's a boy dancing. I'm not filming this, but there's a boy dancing. And I'm remembering why working with little kids really is exhausting. <laughs> and I don't know what I'm going to do in the next school year, whether I'll be teaching uh, kindergarten again. But definitely, I have a lot more energy than. than yeah, yes, Do I really want to teach those kids again? So, of course it depends what you give them. I would give her a story. I would give something more common. Getting back to the subject. So there's Tony, a nice Hispanic. He's from Mexico. And he's also working in his father's garage. And he's gay. So you have a very ethnically diverse uh, population. There's this entitled white people, and there's a girl who's biracial, and there's a Chinese girl who's adopted by two gay men. So you have really a representation of everyone. Which I don't know, is it necessary? I don't know. Um, the, the acting I thought was very, very good, but um, they're all very attractive, no less. No, they are attractive. So there's this girl band of girls forming called H.O. Hands Off, Dealing with the Race. And the third season is very strongly introduced to an African girl, and um, she's narrating. I like the way it's, uh, there's always someone narrating. You hear somebody's voice, and they're narrating. And it's an amazing, amazing acting. And also, there's also a psychologists, there's suicide prevention experts, there's sexual harassment experts, and they're all sitting in a panel and afterwards uh, you can listen to the conversation. I think it would be really great uh, to go one step further, which is to structure a discussion, to give questionnaires. I don't know if they did that, I don't know if they didn't see. Some sort of a questionnaire where teachers and counselors, parents, but just people can just have conversations around the table discussing these topics because it is worth um, discussing. First of all, the signs of suicide, um, signs of depression, um, signs of distress in children or even adults, you know, uh, but in teenagers. And um, parent, you know, it's, I would divide it into peer group, like. Teenagers discussing it, discussing their sexuality, alcohol consumption, being sexually harassed, because I think it's very prevalent, unfortunately. Parents, children relationship, and also the school and the parents relations. So, it would be quite a few questionnaires. It would be really nice based on their series. It would be really good. Third series is really amazing. A lot of drama, a bit too much drama, but it's just grips you at the seat of your pants and I just could go out with the dogs. I mean I had to watch all of them. And with Netflix, you know, I just go from one series to another, one episode to another. I would have to say it's the best, most suspenseful series on Netflix that I've watched. I'm new on Netflix. I've watched The Tiger King, which I really didn't like. I don't like to see animal abuse. Um, for some reason he's the second child who jumps around very long here. Kids here have very little um, boundaries. Um, so, getting back to the topic, it is the best 
Netflix TV series I've seen. But just do it on a weekend because it's so addictive. I've rarely seen a TV series so addictive. Even Modern Family, because it's not a comedy, it's drama, and there's constant drama, and it's like, what's happening now? And then there's a murder, and like, who did it? Who, the Who Done It is in the third season. And it's very, very suspenseful, and to be honest, I couldn't guess. I didn't guess correctly who, who did it. So, and usually, um, I'm not that bad at guessing. So it was pretty, pretty good job. And the one who wrote it did a good job. I, I have to say, it's not that deep, but it's an important topic. And for me, the best part of the TV series was the acting. Great acting by the girl called Jazz, Jessica. Very, very strong girl character. And there's the silly um, cheerleader type um, and, and the clash between the types of girls and unfortunately this is not a good representation for um, an intelligent girl not enough in my opinion there is but why do the Chinese or Asians have to be the smart girl why could you you know or I don't know just, but at the end they make up for it. the African girl is quite intelligent so that was pretty good She's very intellectual. And they were all into robots. I wish there was somebody more into a girl that was into literature. The gay guys do get represented quite a lot. There's one, two, three, four, no. About four gay pupils, that's quite a lot in school. Uh, well, it's a good school. I think I missed my number, so I So I'm on the dentist. I'm going for the first time in the health country. Mm. Mm. I, I can wait. So. I'm going to ask. It's funny, I had pain and now I don't have any more. But Netflix, serious? This was like the best, really. And I felt like it wasn't a waste of time because there were things discussed like sexuality and um, also for me, I didn't like the way they dealt with the sexuality because then I read an article recently in the paper about how children, teenagers should postpone getting into sexual relations and sadly they don't and it is, it is too intense emotionally for it to be at the center of the life of teenagers, I think. We have to deal with so much at school and around them and just their development. It just doesn't seem to be the right timing when you're a teenager, um, like 15, 16, 17. Mm. Better to wait. Um, but it's just it deals with relationships and for some reason girls are attracted to the bad guys. I think it's because they think they find the bad guys, the ones that are more vicious and aggressive. They may be thinking like in the cave the caveman guy type that they will be more likely to protect them. But the opposite is true. At the end they just harm hurt them more. But maybe that's why girls are attracted to men that seem more uh, masculine, more testosterone, and they don't like the men that are more metrosexual and more gentle. That I could see a common theme. The, the, the nice, gentle guy doesn't, doesn't get a break. In my high school, that wasn't necessarily true. Maybe it's because we didn't have jocks. But you no, know, the nice guys also, you know, they, they, they had a girlfriend, but there's. Uh, but the geeks didn't date, that's for sure. I didn't date. Um, so I think it's too stereotyped. The geeks, the intellectual, I mean, some people are a bit mixed of both. And I know in my school at least there, was, there were people that are good at sports and also good in school. It's not necessarily just one thing they're good at. And But maybe it's America and you know, football is very central there. I wouldn't want to be a teenager in, a, in high school in America. It looks really tough. A lot of pressure. A lot of competition. 
because I guess it reflects the values of the society, a lot more competition than I think was in Israel. For me, there was no, I was in competition with myself. I wanted to be good people. But there was not the pressure, um, maybe it's because it's smaller, I don't know. Um, and also, I wasn't really, I didn't really have a social life, so I, did, I can't relate. But it was really interesting to see the relationships. It's a bit fake, it's a bit funny, it's very violent, very dramatic, and there's a lot of sexuality there. And I think there's also porn, which sh shows how porn contributes to girls being objectified, which I say bravo for pointing that out. And I wish there was like a more positive relationship there. At the end there is, but I wish there was to begin with. Our kids that date and are in love and you know, just that because everybody there seems to be just struggling like 30 year olds, like not finding the right types. And I would think when you're young, you're not that selective and it shouldn't have been so complicated, I thought. Maybe I'm wrong. It seems to me when you're younger, it shouldn't be that complicated. If you go all the way to be in a relationship, a serious relationship, I would expect it to be not that complicated. But maybe I'm wrong. I would definitely just find that at a later age. <clears throat> uh, I think it's interesting to watch it. If you dare to watch it with your teenagers, if you have teenagers, that would be fantastic. And then have a family discussion. I would definitely do that. If you can't, if you're a teenager, it doesn't have a, if you don't have a parent, then you know, sit with your friends and watch it. It's really a kind of series that you want and need to have a discussion about. So if I could have a discussion, I would just think about why there's just so much dramatic changes in that. And are American schools really that bad? Do they have so much violence? Um, and is there a rape culture? Or is there a oh no, I'm going to find out what's going on. And so that's one question. Is this, does this depict American high schools? Second of all, um, what is the contribution of alcoholism and drugs to the rape? Uh, culture and third, uh, if our council is so bad, um, what are parents' children relationship like? Is this typical? Um, well, maybe statistics about suicide, how prevalent it is, is it a big problem? Um, about bullying, uh, is it that bad? Is that brutal? Or is this very dramatic? Are these stories? something similar to what's really going on there, why these really uh, exaggerated. That's what I would like to ask. And also, what can we do to know the signs of, of people, adults, or teenagers, or children that might be considering um, ending their lives, then can we do it? Okay. Because I know, and we watch this TV series uh, on Netflix. It's really worth getting Netflix just for this. Very uh, opened up a lot of questions for me.